to make it this far, and that uh, I definitely knew that we was going to make it this far, and end up playing them to, uh, to advance in the front four. You you expect this to be a, as physical a game as maybe you guys have played in a while? I definitely think it'll probably be uh, the most physical game so far this year. Um, I know it's going to come down to um, a couple possessions. You know, I think it's going to be a close game, and you know it's going to come down to rebounding and stopping the scores from scoring. Being a West Virginian, did you ever catch yourself watching West Virginia games? Just kind of you know watching them as a fa a basketball fan? Oh yeah, you know, I watch games. Um, number one game I remember. Remember is when West Virginia played Wake Forest. You know, you know, watch the pitch novel. Um, you know, I always watch uh, John Beeler. You know, talk to him a bunch of times whenever he was there. You know, so um, I watched West Virginia a lot growing up. You know, just because it was only a couple hours away from home. How often do you hear Junior yelled from the stands during games? Oh, uh, I really, I really don't hear that. Um, <laughs> I don't hear Junior. You know. Um, uh, most of the, most of the chance I heard is either overrated against us like the other night or uh, people just screaming my name for the tennis teams. You're aware your dad is one of the most vocal fans or parents probably around ever. Yeah, I realize that, but I don't hear him. That's the thing. <laughs> um, he's screaming, he's yelling, my mom's screaming, yelling, but the thing is, I never hear him. You know, I think my teammates hear him because they tell me a few times, but uh, I guess somehow I'm unable to hear him. How much do they live and die with what you're doing? I mean, they're at everything. It's a 9 o'clock game in Georgia on a Tuesday night. Jobs, you know, it's not, it doesn't matter. They're at everything that you've done in your entire career. Uh, my parents love this. Um, they make sure um, they book flights in advance. Uh, they make sure they um, play on road trips along with Darius family. Um, they don't miss a game. You know, my dad's never missed uh, one of my college games. You know, I think my mom's maybe missed two or three due to work. But, you know, they make sure that they're here supporting us. You know, they've always um, been, you know, um, right there beside me. You know, no matter what's happening, uh, they make sure they're at the games. Hey Patrick, after what you've been through this year, in terms of not only the wins and loss success, but seeing the practices like day to day, can you reflect on the first two years and figure out what was missing? Because maybe you didn't know while you were in the middle of it, but now that you can compare it to something, what, what was, how can you compare the two now? Um, you know, there's really no comparison. Um, you know, each, co each coach has something different, you know. Um, Coach Gillespie believes in long practices. You know, Coach Cal believes in short, hard practices. Um, so I think it's just being able to adapt to what you're doing and uh, just accepting it and doing it. You know, first two years, you know, um, my freshman year, you know, I had never played at the collegiate level before. So, um, you know, I wasn't um, I wasn't sure with anything. You know, I was new to everything. So I, I had to accept what we were doing because I've never done it before. You know, it was extremely tough and just battling. You know, so sophomore year came around and, you know, we had a bunch of problems on the team. Um, not many people were having fun, you know, just, just long practices and just the hard work. You know, we weren't accepting to what we were doing. And, you know, I think coming in, coming in this year, you know, everyone's accepting what's going on. Everyone is, is accepting practice, um, accepting working hard and um, having fun out there on the court. So I think uh, what we do in practice, the hard work and competing and um, just loving practice is paying off on the court. And you say you guys weren't accepting what was going on. Is that a situation where practice was just not functioning well and were guys vocally saying, and this isn't working, or was it when you would get out of practice that that would come up? Or I think it's just everything, you know, a mixture of all that, you know, uh, being out there on the court and um, just not having fun, you know, being out there on the court and just not accepting that what we have to do is what we need to do to get what we want to do done, you know, just accepting that, um, you know, we don't want to be here, or we're not having fun, you know. Um, played the games uh, and you know we had fun with each other we had fun around each other but you know it just didn't show out there on the court. If the new Patrick, coach how would you compare the way Marcus has matured throughout the course of the season and handled situations on the court where people really tried to push and prod him and get him going? Uh, you know the incident against Wake Forest if it was the Marcus um, at the beginning of the year, you know, DeMarcus would have been kicked out the game. You know, we don't know we, what he would have done. You know, so his progression from day one to now is just remarkable. You know, um, he's matured greatly. Um, he's probably one of the most mature people on the team now. Um, you know, he's come so far along and he's worked hard on that. Um, he doesn't let things get to him, you know, like they normally do early in the season. You know, he's been talking with Coach Cal, talking with us, and, you know, just in practice. And when we do that to him, you know, he, he really doesn't do anything, you know. So he's learned to uh, push that aside and move on to the next play and just laugh it off because he knows teams are going to do whatever they can to get him kicked out of the game. To, to be an effective player, how much did he have to do that this season to, to mature? Oh, in order for us to win, he had to do it. You know, um, if he had got kicked out uh, early in games early in the season, you know, we would have lost, you know, because we need 
need him out there to play, you know. So he knows that we need him out there on the court. He knows that he can't get kicked out of the game. He knows that, you know, he can't afford to get technicals because we need him uh, as much as anybody else out there on the court. How much has he improved intellectually on the court in terms of making the right, smart decisions? Uh, a lot. Um, whether it's getting double teamed and making the right pass or uh, in transition, you know, running to the um, to the block, posting up, getting rebounds, um, do whatever he can to help us win. You know, uh, he's improved in every single area. I think. If, if the new coach wasn't Cal, do you think you still would have come back? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I really try not to think about um, if Gillespie had still been here or um, if any other coach had got the hand job, would I still be here? I just know that uh, he he got the job and I came. If DeMarcus had flipped foot last night, you know, if those re roles had been reversed, do you think it, the same call would have been made? What do you mean? It was just a foul, you know, just a regular foul on foot when he flipped DeMarcus. Oh, if DeMarcus it, had done that to foot? Yeah. Is that what you're trying to say? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> if DeMarcus had done that to foot, I'm sure DeMarcus would have got ejected from the game or something. Um, but just because it's DeMarcus, you know, he's a big guy, you know, um, how can he stop him, you know? And uh, teams are trying to do whatever they can to stop him. So I definitely think if DeMarcus had done that to him, um, you know, some another call would have been made, you know, rather than just um, a personal foul and two free throws, you know. So if DeMarcus had done that, you know, we definitely would have seen another call. And when, Can when Kansas lost earlier in the tournament, you, you know, some people, some of y'all were saying that you were the favorites now. Some of you guys were still a little skeptical of that. You know, Syracuse out now, do you think you're the favorites now? Nope. Um, I'm still just wondering how people think we're the favorites when you know everyone thought that we was going to be the first number one team out. Um, everyone thought that we were the most overrated number one team. You know, everyone thought all these negative things about us, and now that um, the top two favorite number one teams are out, you know, people want to put the targets on our back. You know, people want to pretty much, I uh, guess, jump on our bandwagon. You know, so I find that hard to believe that you go from putting us down, saying negative things about us, saying that we're going to lose, to say, hey, you know, they're going to win it this year, you know. So, um, you know, I just can't put my finger on that. Is that motivation? Um, you know, we use um, what people say about us as, as motivation. You know, we want to prove um, the haters wrong. You know, we want to prove everyone who says this and that about us wrong. You know, and we believe um, that we are a great basketball team. We know what we're capable of. And you know, we truly believe that we can win this national title if we continue playing better and if we keep improving. What's it, what's it mean that 